In this video, I'll show you how to build this powerful telescope yourself. With this telescope, you'll be able to see the rings of Saturn, Jupiter and its moons, and the craters of the moon. It's really quite remarkable for a homemade telescope. What you'll need is a 3D printer, a spherical mirror set, some nuts and bolts, some rods, and a, an eyepiece. And I'll put a product link to all of that in the description below. Before you print all of your files, the first thing you need to do is you need to calibrate and make sure that your printer will print it to the dimensions that you need. And so this first piece is the first thing that we're going to print. So here it is out of the printer and with no adjustments whatsoever, it's so tight that I can barely jam it onto this dowel, which is the same size as uh, the steel rods in the project. So the diameter of the hole on mine averaged out to around 12.7 millimeters, and this is smaller than the half inch rod. And it varies in different locations, but it was around 13 or a little bit more, 13 millimeters or a little bit more. So if you take the difference or two in percent, in my case, it was about 4%. And so that's what I increased the size in my slicer, was 4% larger. So you need to print it again with the scaling and confirm that it works. And here it slips on nice and easy, but it isn't too loose. I think it makes sense to print and install this from the bottom up. So the first thing I'm gonna do is print out the lower tube assembly, which consists of the outer shell and the mirror cell, plus the sights. The lower assembly is tacked to the main rods with six nuts and bolts. And I used half inch length nuts and bolts here. So I slip the nuts into the little slots and then thread the screws into the nuts. Here's the lower mirror cell. Now, I couldn't find any hex heads at the hardware store, and I went to a couple. So what I've done is I've jammed on a nut as tight as I can get, and then I'll just use these. So you put three of them in like that, and then put your springs on. and then thread them through there. Okay. Now, I don't have the knurled nuts printed, so for the time being, I'm just going to use nuts and then I can upgrade that a little bit later. But at the time being, I just need this to go on. This can still work. It's just not quite as handy as it will be with knurled nuts. Okay, so now we can adjust the cell. We can glue on the, uh, the mirror at this point. Now I need to align that. When I get it aligned, then I'll set it aside for a few hours. Okay, so the interface, this is on top. And then there is a divot here, as you can see. And this side is smooth. The upper assembly is here, the lower assembly is down here. And so if you align this, 
like this. So that way you can go from almost horizontal to vertical. And these take longer screws. These are three quarter inch. Now it has to be mirrored on this side. Just like that. and then tighten all those down. And so this has a little catch right here on this one side only so that it stays solid in this direction. So here's the focuser. I want to make sure when you print it that it goes in nice and easy. Make sure that the you got to clean it, this all out and then make sure this threads. Okay. A nice smooth action. So here's a 23 millimeter of spheric eyepiece. We'll put that in there like that, okay? And then I have some half inch nuts and bolts. Just slip those in. And then we'll grab three nuts. And we'll attach that. Now for this piece, there is only one way that this goes in. So if you, you gotta find the way it goes in, because any other way and they won't line up. So you, okay, so it goes like this, slides down in there. And I think it's easier to assemble the mirror off, but you have to get the orientation right. Okay, those are all lined up. Okay, so I got the spring on and the hex nut. You can just spin this and we'll get a little bit of tension on it. Okay. And then once it has some tension, then we'll put our nuts on to align it.
Okay, so there's the finished assembly. And um, I'm now ready to glue on this secondary mirror. And then um, no use tighten these down too much until we get the uh, thing aligned. So I can go ahead and attach this. Well, I think what I'll do is I'll glue this mirror on now and then I'll attach it after that sets. After the silicon is set on the secondary mirror, we can now install the spider onto the upper telescope assembly. When you print the knobs, you have to program in a pause so you can place the nuts. After they're inserted, just resume printing. All right. And you can see that the nuts are embedded in the knobs. And so you might have to play around a little bit with your printer to get that to work. These come in really handy. All right, we're ready to assemble the mount. It goes next. Next is the lower side, and you want to make sure that it's biased correct. You now the baffle goes here. Make sure you get that on the right one, which is going to be this one right here. And then we're ready for the upper assembly. And then the upper side. And again, you got to keep the bias correct. There's your offset. Leave these loose and don't put the baffle up tight yet because we have to we have to focus it. So I'm just going to put these kind of where they go and out of the way and then we'll align them later. I just want to put them on tight enough that they don't fall off. Okay, so that's the approximate location and we'll finalize the location soon. That'll be our next step.
The mount will be constructed from 3 quarter inch plywood. I need to very carefully trace the Z bearing radius here on this plywood. And then I'll first cut it out rough with the scroll saw and then I'll go back with the orbital and clean up it right to the line. I'm going to use screws to attach the plywood and all holes need to be pre-drilled so nothing will split. I'm going to use a Lazy Susan. Uh, you can find these at the hardware store or I'll put a product link in the description below. Uh, they're pretty inexpensive but this will give me a good XY movement of the mount. I'll be using 832 machine screws because this is what I have, but you can use whatever size will fit the hole. You need to mount the other one now before you attach it to the telescope and because the only way that you can get the bolts in is when it's not mounted to the scope. My memory card ran out during the final assembly, but what I have here, I have three bolts. And that's on the lower base, and then, and then you can adjust the tilt, and you can take out any slop, which is the three. If you had four, then it's going to be a lot harder. And then I put this one right here, and I can even do a micro up and down control of the entire mount, which is by turning that one right there. And so now we can move it right and left, and then up and down, and then uh, here's a brake that I put on with a knurled nut to lock that in position. On the bottom we have here some T-nuts, and I drove those in from the bottom, and then that gives you the adjustment up and down, and you can level it on any surface, so there are three of them. And then here is the Lazy Susan. So to align our telescope, the first thing you do is going to take out the lens and set that aside. And then we first want to align the upper mirror here. So what you need to do is you need to look down here and run this secondary mirror up and down until it is absolutely in the center of this hole here. And that is your first step. When that is done, and what you can do is uh, Put a center spot finder on your lower mirror here. All right. Now the next thing, and you want to also make sure that your knobs here have some tension on them, and so that the springs are are down a ways, and that way we can start our alignment process. Now looking through the focusing hole, what you want to do is align these. So you start turning the knob. 
and then see their effect and then you turn another knob and see it, its effect and then you work them together so that they both align perfectly. Right about there. The next step is going to be to focus it. So after we have our mirrors aligned, when you put your eyepiece back in and tighten that up and take the cap off and then you have the threads halfway in and out so that you can go in a little bit or you can go out a little bit. And then you take it out at night and with the 23 millimeter lens, you just slide this, the, this up and down, have these loose, just slide it up and down until you can get a good clear image of the sky. And then you tighten it down and then you put the baffle up where it's supposed to go and then you align the sights. After the telescope was built, I went out and the first thing I did was look at Saturn. And I was able to get this image after a little bit of processing. I was really surprised to be able to see it. Now in the eyepiece it was much clearer and had a lot more color. So I need to work on my camera setup and try and get a better image through the camera. Now last night we had a waxing crescent of the moon and I was able to see the craters and I was really impressed with how clear it was. So I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. And stay tuned for updates. I have some hardware updates and some imaging updates that I intend to release here in the next few days.